Hello and welcome to my channel and to another Canvas Workspace project of the week. This week I have another 3D project for you and I hope you're really going to like it because not only is it cute but it also is practical. Here's what we're going to be making today, a popcorn card. And as you can see, I filled it with popcorn, and you can do the same, of course. Now, the dimensions that I'm going to be giving you today are for what I would consider an individual serving popcorn cart. But you can make it whatever size you want, so you could use the dimensions that I'll give you, and then just increase them to double the size, or whatever you like. So let's now go over to Canvas Workspace and we'll get started on constructing the file and then cutting it out and assembling this popcorn card. Let's go. Start with a square and change the size of that square to four by five and a half. So take the aspect ratio off, four by five and a half. And then I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to create a tab. Change that to about 0.5. I'm going to place it here to the side. This is where you're going to glue the four panels together. And I'm going to bring that down in height to 5 inches. Then select both of those shapes and align them at the bottom. To use the distribute space down to zero to get them to overlap just enough so that you weld together, which they have. And I can see that my spacing is exactly as I want it. So now I can bring this bring some color in there up into the corner here and it's at zero and zero so I can place some score lines now so I'm just going to lock that down while I bring my score lines in so I'll use the path tool for this and I'm going to hold down the shift key and go to properties change that to a perforation line. So that is our score line which is going to create the side tabs. Now we'll have another glue tab up here at the top. So we're going to do the same thing again. Only we're going to go across and we'll place this one on the Y position to five point five zero so it's going to whoops just going to scoot it down a bit and there we are so that is our basic shape for that panel. We need to do three more, and there's going to be actually two different sizes here. So this is our first one. I'm just going to group this together so I can just move it off the screen for a moment, and we can bring in our next square for the side panel. And this is going to be three inches, and it's going to be the same height, so five and a half. We'll duplicate that one and do the same again. Bring it down to 0 0.50.
and five inches in height, align it, and then we can use our distribute space function and weld that one together. That is three and a half by five and a half. So we'll move it up into the corner lock it in place and we're going to do the same with those score lines two sizes that we need so there'll be two of this and two of this one next I want to put some windows in here so I'm going to go to the shapes and you've got all these different shapes you can choose from if you like. I'm going to use this one here. I'll bring that onto this panel here. And when I've got it about the size I want. I'm going to aim to get it approximately in the middle of here between this score line and the edge of the panel come over just one more and then I'm going to duplicate this to use on the other except of course, this one's more narrow, so I'm going to also bring that in a bit. And I'll get it where I want it as well. And then I'm going to try to keep them as even as I can, as level. So I see here that this, this is at 1.29, so I'll. Oh, and that's at 1.29, so that's good. So next we need to punch these windows through this back piece. These are on top, so that's good, that's what we want in order to be able to punch these through. We don't want to select these score lines, however, because they are considered open pass and they will prevent us from using our process overlap, so I need to make sure those are ungrouped. Then I'm going to select the, that window as well as the shape behind it. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just use divide because I want to keep this piece here for something else later. Now you can see when you send that to the back, the score lines are still there. Okay, let's do this one next. Now this one, I'm just going to use subtract because I don't need to save anything from that one and I'll send that to the back as well. I'll make a copy of this one once I've got the mats created but I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this now because I want to do something a little different with one of these. Now you don't have to do that, you can keep them both exactly as they are the same. But I want to cut out a little rectangle in one of these that I can put a popcorn sign behind. You could still make the popcorn sign and not have the rectangle cut out if you don't want to. Just glue it onto the front of the panel. So I'm going to Grab a square and create a rectangle here. And I'll just sort of center it here. We're going to have a shelf that's going to sit underneath this window where you would put your salt and maybe some napkins, things like that. And when I'm happy with that, 
then I'll subtract that from this shape. So click both of those and subtract. And you send it to the back. Your score lines appear. So we have three of these panels and now we're ready to create some mats for them. Now the mats need to be inside of this perforation lines or these perforation lines I should say and the way I've worked out how to do it you might have a different method but this is how I'm going to do it I'm going to make copies of these and I don't need the score lines I just need the shapes like so and to create the area for the mat, I'm going to now cut away these tabs at the top and at the side. So to do that, I'm going to bring in a square and I'm going to make sure that it completely covers everything that I want to cut away. So want it to go beyond that and I'll change that size of that to 0.5 because this is the size of our tab I can go ahead and make some copies of this so that I've got them ready to use on these two pieces select these align them to the left and now subtract and that has cut that tab away we'll do the same with this one and this one all we have left now to do is the tab at the top. So it's the same process once again. It's going to go all the way across here and we want it to be point five zero. Duplicate that. And now I can align this at the top and subtract. going to use to create our mat. So you can see those will fit inside of that perforation line but we've got to use now the offset to create the mat. So I'm going to I'm going to see if I can just do all of them at the same time. I'm going to go to offset and I'm going to use inward and change the corner shape to a bevel. Point one two should do it, and there are the mats created. So if I color that in, I can show you with this one. Oops! Before we do that, we've got to divide these. Let's divide them, and now I can move that up, and you can see. how that's going to fit in there. So after you use the offset, then go back and divide it so that it separates all those. Let's 
that one that sits on top. That means you can now just get rid of these. They are not needed anymore. A duplicate of these two, so I'm going to group that. and duplicate it and I'm going to duplicate this mat as well and I can go ahead and group these so that I can move those off of the page I'm going to create a shelf for this that shelf is going to fit in this space here. So if you don't have this rectangle, it would just go below the window here. And you're going to have it sitting on brackets. Now, I want to use this for my shelf. Just going to make it a bit smaller. And it will come across like so. It's going to rest on top of the brackets. Now I like the shape of this and that's why I kept that but I don't want this. I just want that straight across. So I'll bring in a square and I'll take that bit out by selecting those two and using subtract to cut that away. And now I have my new sh shape, which is going to be my shelf. I want to rest that on some brackets. And to make the brackets, you can use this and just bring it down in size. And if I flip it over, you'll see that that would be the section that this side would attach to. So I'm going to put some score lines in here, form the little tabs that you, you'll glue this in place with. And you don't have to be real precise, just kind of eyeball it. They have one that comes across as well. And another thing I'm going to do just just going to put a little slit in here so that I can use my scissors later to cut that out. You could even cut a V in here if you want and that would make your angled bracket but I'm going to just leave it at that what I'll do is I will group it and let me just see what size I've got so far it's not too bad it should be about right. anything up to about two inches should be okay and what I'll do is I'll duplicate this And I will flip that round to show you you'll have one bracket going one way and one going the other. And it will fit down here on these sides. So we could make these a bit smaller probably. So that they fit in there. You can just play around with it till you get it about the size that you think you want. So that is the shelf unit. We'll pull that off to the side. Next, I'm going to make the little sign that I want to place in here. And as I said, you don't have to place it behind that aperture you could just have it just glued straight to the
panel. But what I'm going to do is bring in my rectangle and make sure that it will go behind there so I can glue that behind so it won't show through here. And then I'll bring in my text and I'm going to just type the word popcorn. I'm just using the first font that comes up, which is the Antique Oakland, but you could use whatever you like. And you want to make sure it's going to fit inside of here. So what I'll do now is align it. And I'm just going to group it and send it backwards here. So I can see that it's going to be fine. Now just going to momentarily ungroup this because I need the rectangle to be cut out but I need the word popcorn to be drawn so I need to change that to a draw now if you want to only have an outline or maybe you could fill the word popcorn in with your own pencils or markers whatever you like then just leave it as is without a fill. But if you want your pen, like I want my pen to draw it in, then I need to give it a color. And it doesn't matter what color you want because it's going to depend on the pen that you put in your machine. So I could, for now, just give it a blue and then I could have a red pen so it doesn't make any difference. So now I'm just going to group this together so it stays and when I cut this out I want to be sure I draw the popcorn word first and then cut the rectangle out because if you cut the rectangle out and for some reason it, it shifts on your mat then when you go to use your pen, then your popcorn could be, you know, off center. It could be off to the side, or you know, not actually line up where you want it. So always do your drawing first, and then your cutting. All right next, I'm going to create the awning for this. I want to bring in both of these so I know what size I need. And to create the awning, I'm going to use a border. And I think I'll use this one. You could use even this one down here. With, it's a little fancier. I'll bring that into here. And the aim is to get it inside of the this area here so you don't want it to go beyond these score lines so you can decide how far out you'd like it to go and I'm going to glue mine right below here you could if you wanted to glue it onto the this the top of this tab but what I'm going to do instead is to create some mats to cover those tabs and make them just a bit neater but I need to create a score line for this and to do that I'm going to add a piece to it use a square and whatever size this is I'm going to match it 3.79 And then I'll bring that down and 
Let's line that up. And now we want to make sure they've overlapped. I'm going to use this process overlap again. Maybe this time it will be vertical and I'll weld that. And then I'm going to put a score line across here. Before I do that though, I'm going to create another awning for this side. And if I want it to stay exactly the same in length, I can simply just take a slice of this out. And again, all we need to do is use our square place it where I want it to go and then I can select the square and this awning shape and subtract it and now I have my awning for this side now I just need to put in some score lines and if you want to use the X and Y to help you out, you can do that. Put that up in the corner there at zero. And then you want to place a score line in here. And then you can decide how, how large a score line you want. I wouldn't go any more than a half an inch, but let's see. That's not too bad. So that is at, I believe, three five. That should be enough. You could go up to half an inch, but I think I'll just go back to that three five. That looks pretty good to me. And I'll do the same for the other one. A dash line. Oh, yeah. And there is our awning. Now I said I also want to do some layers for these top pieces. So all I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle. That pretty much fits within there and gives a little bit of a border. And I'll do one for this side as well. And then that will just kind of neaten that up just a bit. So that's all done. The last thing then that we have to do are the wheels. And they are really simple. So we need a circle. Yeah, we've got the circle. I'm going to bring that down to about oh, a little over an inch. And then I'll use the offset to do an inward and I'll change it to a round and I'll keep the spacing the same and I'm just going to move that out of the way because now I'm going to add some spokes into this so this let me just fill that with white and I'll choose a spoke you can 
use whatever you like. You can make your own spokes up, whatever you want. I'm going to use this little star here. I'm going to place that inside of here. I'll line that up. In fact, I think I'll make another copy of that to use with my little sign as well. What I'll do now is subtract that, so it's punched that through. When I fill that, you'll see what's happened, and then you'll line those up when you get ready to glue those together. So you just need three more of these and you'll have everything that you need. And that, even though it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, is everything that we need. So, I will spare you the organization that I'm going to be doing to get these over to my machine. I'll send them and then I'll show you how to assemble them once you've cut all your pieces. So, I'll see you there very soon. and. Get ready for a little treat. I have all my pieces cut out here. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and done the matting just to save us a little bit of time. I've also put the acetate onto the back of the windows. I just put that down with some red liner tape. And the next thing we're going to do is attach them. Now I've already attached this one, but I'm going to do the next panel. So we've got the side, the front, and then the next panel is going to be another side. I've folded these score lines and I'm going to put my adhesive on now. You could use tape, but I'm going to use the glue because it gives me a little more wiggle room. So if I have to move it about, I've got time to do that, whereas the tape is going to be an instant grab. So I'm going to just line that up at the bottom there. And I don't want to go over that score line. I want to be sure that I've kept that free so that it can fold. And I'll do the back panel now. And it's going to be the same thing. So you want to be sure that all your tabs at the top line up and all your tabs on the side line up. So once we get this in place, then we can just wrap it round and attach it to that very first side. So again, have that come in like so. Give it some pressure here. And I just give that a little bit of a chance to set. And then this piece is going to come over and attach here. And it's much easier if you do it lying down like this where it's flat. Because you can align it much easier. So we're going to apply a adhesive here. And then just fold it in like that. And match it to that side. Then you can see we have our little box. And we have these tabs at the top here. We're just going to fold in like that. You could angle them off if you like. Or you can just leave them as they are. 
before I do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and do my shelf. So for this, all you have to have is the score lines folded. And it's going to fit inside of here. you can see that we're going to have it come down below that window and you can decide how far down you want to go I'm going to attach one side at a time I'll do this one first and then we'll do the other side these in and just apply our glue here I think I'll hold this one back just give it a good pinch there till it takes hold and then you can do the other three sides going to neaten these tabs here with these little strips just finishes it off and also helps to keep those tabs down as well Okay, now I'm going to attach this little shelf here. It's going to go on the side where that popcorn sign is. With these little perforation lines here. And I can just snip these. Here. 
into. Place them. So that they go. I'm just going to have them go in this little piece here. Okay, I've changed my mind about that. <laughs> I'm going to bring it in closer here. I'm not going to worry about those little stars. Put my shelf on next. And that I'm going to put in so that it is at an angle. I could have it go this way or the other. I think I'll do it that way. Let's just take this backing off. this so that those sides angle in like so. I'm going to put on the awnings. Now this has a score line at the top. So I'm going to just fold these back. have another one here somewhere that is right so we have the shorter ones which are going to go on the side and then the longer ones will go on the front and back again I'm going to just use this glue now you can put it like this and fold it out or you can have it so that it is a little more dimensional. So I think I'm going to do that. In which case I need to put my glue on the outside here. If you wanted to go around the top. So if, for instance if you didn't have these pieces you could use this as a way to cover that. In that case, you would put your glue on the other side. But I'm going to put mine like that so that I can just match it up here. And then that does pop out a little bit that way. do is attach the wheels so they are already matted and then we need to fit them on the front and on the back so I'm going to just get an idea where I want those to go. If I use my glue then I'll have time to of course move them about if they're not even. So I'm only putting glue on the top half of that.
and I'm coming in I think that it's probably about a quarter of an inch thereabouts right that glue is pretty well set and you can't have a popcorn cart of course without some popcorn so we're just going to tip this in here got another bowl here popcorn cart it's not only decorative but practical as well you could put this on your coffee table while you sit back and enjoy your favorite film or television program and give yourself a little treat as well so I'm glad you joined me for this tutorial today and I do hope you'll give this a try it's not very difficult once you have the pattern down and as I said before please decorate this however you choose add whatever you like and enjoy it I will hopefully see you again next week with another Canvas Workspace Project of the Week. Again, I'm not certain what it's going to be yet, but I will have my thinking cap on very soon. In the meantime, be sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you're not already so, and that you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out when I load that video. In the meantime, please take care. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now. Bye.